2020, the FDM set down a marker for the people of Bermuda to know that we understand their desire for a government that not only considers the people, but also encourages them to develop themselves economically, educationally, and spiritually. Today marks the end of our period of strategic silence. We chose this approach of strategic silence because we support democracy and in recognition that experience is often the best teacher. It was important for us to allow the people of Bermuda the opportunity to see the government they voted for working for them. During this period, the FDM has proceeded to rebrand and revise its policies to ensure that Bermuda has the government in waiting that she truly deserves. This rebrand also includes a new logo and website that expresses the spirit of our organization and the people of Bermuda. We've also launched the FDM Leadership Academy, which will be open to all Bermudians under 40 years of age. This academy will produce the next generation of political leadership in Bermuda and is open to all, regardless of political affiliation. Our founder and leader, the Honorable Mark Bean, JP, has spent the last year preparing for this very moment to unveil the FDM as a government in waiting for our beautiful island. The FDN has continued its, man its mantra from 2020 of clean hands and pure hearts. And we implore those in the community who understand these ideals to visit our website, www.fdmbermuda.com and register as a member to join this movement. If you are currently involved in a political party and you feel marginalized, our door is open for you to come in and contribute to an entity that serves the interests of all people of Bermuda. Our strategy over the next few months will be what we refer to as the three C's, communication, canvassing, and finally candidates. Communications, the ability to articulate our vision for Bermuda, incorporating our proposed policy prescriptions that respond to the needs of the day and set a clear and coherent path towards national rejuvenation. Canvassing, touching base with you, the electorate, to listen to your ideas and concerns to impact you within your respective environments. Candidates, continuing our development of a substantive pool of potential candidates that will represent the FDM in parliament and in cabinet. Our primary goal is to be the next government of Bermuda, guided by the following principles, self-discipline, humility, accountability, and morals and ethics. We understand that many of these principles have been overlooked by those in government, but they are essential to be exemplified if we are to alter the downward trajectory of our island. The challenges that we face today are not systemic in nature, but are rather an issue of people and poor representation. Without adherence to the above mentioned principles, reflected in a change of attitude and behavior, a change of system will produce the same performance and good go and bad governance. Today is a joyous occasion. Today represents a new beginning for all Bermudians, both locally and overseas. Today represents a moment where your voices are amplified and your concerns are met by an organization that is at your service. We would like to thank the public for their continued words of encouragement over the last three years. It is your continued support and prayers that fuels us to redouble our efforts because without you, we are nothing. We thank you for your patience, time, and consideration and humbly extend an invitation to all of you to participate in the renewal of our island home. Thanks, everyone. You can nod your questions to the Honorable Mark Bean. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, my first question, what exactly are you looking to achieve in the next election? Quite frankly, our purpose is to position ourselves to be the next government of Bermuda. You do have 36 candidates. Uh, you're going to be presenting 36 candidates? Absolutely. 36 candidates will be presented for consideration to the public. Yet our focus is not just on 36. Our focus is on the development of a pool of candidates whereby we can uh, choose and select uh, from that greater pool, uh, who we think is best suited 
for various constituencies and for various uh, tasks. With the current administration, do you think the 326 has been an advantage or a disadvantage? It's a double-edged sword. Uh, and, you know, you have a super majority, and so you're able to get as much legislation as you so desire passed through government or passed through parliament without too much of a hiccup. But at the same time, when you have such a large majority, it becomes a balancing act uh, for the leadership of any government uh, to be able to satisfy the needs and desires of their entire backbench and caucus. Thank you. Morning, Mr. Good um, morning. You resigned from politics in 2016 because of health reasons. How's your health now? My health is good. I feel good. I hope I look good. You know, thank you. And uh, clearly, not 100%, no one is. But I can say that I'm in the upper 90s and uh, my mind is sound. Uh, my physical being is, is strong. So, yeah, I'm pretty pleased as, as to how I have progressed personally from that setback a few years ago to where we are today. Now, at a press conference last week, John said that um, politics have become tribal um, and, and people vote for political parties. They support political parties in the same way that they support a football team. You know, and it's, it's just pure loyalty and they will always vote one way rather than for the, for the, for the opposition, for the opposing team. Um, is it, do you think that's the case or, or do you think it's, it's um, you know, there is, there is room for, for parties to be um, independent and for, for people to, to vote for the candidate rather than the party? It's a combination of all the above. You know, uh, certainly persons have switched allegiance and loyalties based on the uh, particular person, the candidate. And at the same time, you have a large group of persons who are loyal to their particular uh, political party. And obviously it stems from historical reasons and cultural reasons more than anything else. But as human beings, we are not, or we do not have an homogenous approach to, to politics. And people have the ability to change their minds according to the conditions of the time. What do you think the FDM can offer to the voters that the OBA and the PLP can? We go off a lot, starting with uh, emphasis on our principles, which is accountability, honesty, uh, being able to speak truth and mean it. And uh, at the same time, you know, I'm not saying, we're not here to criticize either the opposition or the uh, incumbent government, but clearly there is a, a serious gap in terms of the connectivity between those in politics today and those who are supposed to be represented by uh, the, uh, those persons who have put themselves forward. And so we're going to make sure that we conduct ourselves in the highest principled manner, and hopefully that reflects well in the policies that we're able to present uh, to the people of this country for their consideration. What we do know is that uh, what the FDM represents is going to be a complete alternative to the status quo of politics that we experience in the country, in particular over the last few years. And it's a, an alternative that's nothing new, it's nothing that I myself has created in my own mind, but we have a government over the years that have uh, followed a particular path based on their ideals, and they are very much now, I think that they consider those ideals to be essential, but oftentimes what they say the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And I think that's the challenge that we're facing today is that what we think and what we say from a government perspective does not match. And that's to the detriment of the people of this country. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Green, I have just two quick questions. You said you will be presenting 36 candidates at the next general election. Yes. And how many, how many candidates have you voted so far? I wouldn't reveal that. That's strategic and tactical all at the same time. And I, as you could appreciate the way we operate, we always have in mind uh, a strategic approach 
and we'll never reveal uh, what we're actually doing out front. It's something that our opponents will have to realize when they see it. But rest assured that it's not just 36 candidates that we are in the process and have started recruitment, but we're looking to develop a large pool of potential candidates uh, so that we can ensure that the 36 that we do uh, settle to represent the people of this country are the strongest and most effective candidates that we can actually present. And lastly, um, you said today marks the end of a period of strategic silence. Yes. Is there any concern that the public may not view it that way? They may think it's been a period of absence instead. Sure, the public might have their opinions. Uh, some people might think strongly that uh, that we have disappeared, and we haven't. But at the same time, it's important to realize what was mentioned in our opening statement that uh, experience is the best teacher. And because we are adherents of, uh, we are adherents to the idea of democracy, uh, we had to make sure or allow the people of this country to face uh, the positives or consequences of the choices they made in 2020. Elections have consequences or benefits. It all depends on uh, the application of good governance from the people who have been elected. Thank you. Good morning. Morning, ma'am. Nice to see you. It's a blessing to see you too. You mentioned this strategic silence. The critics would say you've been in hibernation. Mm -hmm. Would it not have been smarter to build momentum leading up to this day? What do you say in hindsight? No, there's no regret because we knew that when we first emerged in 2020, that it was ahead of time. So we were ahead of our times. And we were only able to produce 15 candidates on a very short notice of three or four days. And so we realized that while the people appreciate, generally speaking, what we are attempting to do in 2020. Three years later, you realize that time is longer than rope. And through the experiences of the current government and the opposition, we realize that the time will come that what was not appreciated in 2020 will certainly be appreciated now. So we have no regrets in the, in the stance that we took over the last few years. The last time you ran, for the FDM, it was in the constituency now held by the Attorney General, Kathy Lynn Simmons, yes. who is now at the center of a conflict of interest type thing. Um, can you speak to the sentiment on, on the case of the Attorney General not responding to her husband getting another government contract? Um, what does it say about this reputation building momentum with the PLP about their friends and family? I have no comment. The FDM has no opinion or comment on what the PLP has done. If people feel that there is a gap in terms of ethics, then it's for them to uh, make that clear at the next election. Can but you say whether you'll run against her again? I would not even reveal that. But again, today is not to focus on uh, any particular person within the current government or in the opposition. Uh, our idea today is to announce that the FDM is back on the runway and we're about to take off and we're inviting people who are, are like-minded to join us. Sure. So in light of the medical situation, you've mm -hmm. since had another baby, a young family, mm -hmm. what would you say to critics who say, why now, you know, go live your life? Well, you can walk and chew gum at the same time. And when a man or a woman recognizes their purpose in life, then it's incumbent for them to fulfill their purpose and pursue it. And I am no different. And those in this room who have joined the FDM are no different. And people are voluntarily associating themselves with the free democratic movement. If people have a heel wheel because I have a family, a young family, which I consider to be a supreme blessing, then that's not my issue. That's not the FDM's issue. But I will always ensure that my family comes first. I am a man, 100%. Thank you. Mr. Vian, I want to ask you another last question. Uh, there's a lot of discontent with the education system, one. Both ends of the island, St. George 
and Somerset <clears throat> controversy with the school closures. Uh, four seats in St. George for PLP, four seats in Somerset. Um, are you going to use that as a, a tactic to, to reveal um, or to show those um, individuals, those voters from both hands that this has been somewhat of a, 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 a what you call a disrespect to them for how the uh, education minister has been this this situation. Again, that's not our position to criticize the current government. What I can say is that we have a totally different approach to addressing concerns regarding uh, educational reform, and I don't want to preempt uh, our our entity uh, from in terms of present our ideas. But I can say that the, it, that different approach uh, means that we do not have any intention to close the schools. And we will be looking to sit down with the concerned entities or institutions on either end of the island. Yes, it's potentially a political opportunity to take advantage of the ill feeling that people might harbor towards the government. But in the end, education is about the cultivation and development of our minds, in particular children and even us as adults. So while it can be used as a political football, our focus is ensuring that we have a system that speaks to uh, growth and development and ensuring that the island is able to advance. And right now, I think most of the feedback that we have seen uh, over the last few months, and particularly even years, it's been reflective of the fact that people are not comfortable with the approach that uh, we are going through right now. And so basically, uh, look forward to us presenting that alternative vision idea of education. Uh, the fact is, is that if in one hand, we are saying that we need more people in the country, we need to attract Bermudians back to the country, we need to attract uh, new persons, non-Bermudians to the country, then it's kind of contradictory to seek to close schools. It shows that the vision is not coherent. And what's important is for us to understand that if we are going to seek to build or develop our education system, it's got to be one that doesn't uh, take out or remove facilities in school. The idea is to grow and, and not to diminish. And that is going to be the overarching focus of the new government or the government in waiting, which is the FDN. Just for our viewers, let me identify who the individual is. Uh, introduce sure. the young man sitting here. Sure. Good day, Umar Deal, FDM member. He's the, um, he's, the, he's the organizer for the Hamilton Song Branch. So we've broken it down into seven regional um, areas in Bermuda and two overseas areas, and um, Umar is, has the uh, Harrington Son um, branch. It's a bit early, but what are you hearing in terms of disenchantment amongst voters? More and more, I'm hearing elders in particular say they're not voting, they had enough of all of you. What are you hearing? Well, they're not had enough of the FDM because, as you said, they haven't, they haven't had nothing from the FDM over the last few years, right? But I have heard, and I'm sure all of us have heard, the uh, disenchantment with uh, politics in Bermuda today, but hopefully uh, what we are undertaking now can give a, a new source of hope that there is an opportunity for us to navigate out of the challenges that we're facing. Any special message for David Burke? No, absolutely not. Thank you very much. That concludes this. Mm -hmm. Press conference. Thank you. Thank you. And for the media, I give my undertaking to over the next couple hours, the next few days, uh, to offer you a exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with myself, and so um, we can dig a little deeper into any other questions that you might have. Just stay seated. One second. Then you have it for those that are joining us. All right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.